Hello, uh, this is Evelyn Morales. Uh, welcome to my first podcast. It's called Foresight with Evelyn. Today, I have a very special guest with me um, and, and a longtime friend, astronaut Douglas Willock. Douglas um, is an active astronaut. He was selected um, to be an astronaut in 1998 after he retired from the U.S. Army. He uh, flew in uh, the space shuttle mission STS-120 in 2007 and later on in 2010 uh, as he served with, as a flight engineer for the Expedition 24 and as the commander for the Expedition 25th. Uh, Doug um, actually conducted very special unplanned spacewalks, which I remember very vividly because I helped train them <laughs> virtually. Um, he is a New Yorker. Um, he holds a Bachelor in Science in Applied Science and Engineering from the U.S. Academy in West Point, and also uh, a Master's in Science in Aerospace Engineering from Georgia Tech. Doug, welcome to my podcast. Thank you, Evelyn. It's a, it's a thrill to be joining you in, um, in our new reality here as we're operating from our, from our homes and different bases all over. And so it's just a really th a thrill to be with you. And um, I look back with, um, with fond memories of our time together training at NASA and, and uh, you getting me ready for those spacewalks that, were, uh, that really were life-changing for me and, um, and the training that we went through and the preparation that we did in the, in the virtual reality lab and also our underwater uh, training facility, the neutral buoyancy lab at NASA as well. Um, just tremendous training facilities to help us prepare really for for venturing out into the unknown of the vacuum of space. And so I'm really grateful for uh, uh, for my time training with you and uh, and really excited to be joining you on this podcast. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation. I know how busy you all are at this point. So, um, well, let's talk about a few things today. Um, uh, first of all, uh, as we are experiencing through all this pandemic and new reality that we have, um, I know that traveling to space requires an amount of imposed isolation. Um, what mental skills uh, were critical for you in particular to train for in a space flight? Uh, give yeah, me a it's, a it's a really great question, and it's actually applicable to all of us now in this sort of, we're in this period of self-quarantine or quarantine or isolation and so it's a different reality you know we we uh we hear uh, uh the new normal i don't this is this will never be normal or feel normal anyway but um but the skills that we train our astronauts to do because just after just a few days in space um the, uh, feelings of isolation and separation from family and friends and the and the planet that we love and that really sustains life for us. Um, those feelings set in really early on and it begins to invade, um, uh, I'd like to talk about four concepts of, of who you are and who you're becoming. And so we have our, our physical health, of course, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, and then our spiritual health, our purpose, our connection to, uh, to what our purpose is in life, you know? And so, all of those pillars of, of who you are are so vitally important and that we have to look after um, all of those areas of, of health for us because until we can really be healthy in those four areas, it's difficult to, to uh, help others uh, reach those same um, um, milestones of health in their own lives. And so whether it be your family or your coworkers, or a team that you're working with in a in a high high performance environment, um, like doing spacewalks in outer space and things. And so, and so, what we do about a holistic a holistic approach? Yeah, it's it's more of a holistic approach. And uh, and although you know many of us think differently about each of those four areas of our life. So I like to refer to it as heart, mind, body, and soul. And so the whole concept of you, because when there's a piece of that that's missing or that needs to be shored up a little bit, um, uh, there, there, you're, you're not able to perform to your highest potential. And so we encourage and we train our astronauts to really kind of build 
undergird the foundation of their existence um, uh, with these four pillars of, of who they are, you know, uh, heart, mind, body, and soul. And so that's a great place to start. And so for all of us, you know, let's take, for instance, the quarantine that we're in right now. This is very similar to life on board the space station. Um, right. You're you're separated um, uh, from friends and family. You can talk to them on the phone. You can talk to them online, what have you. And we could do those very same things from space. But being physically absent um, and separated from each other really starts to uh, it starts to uh, sort of wear us down in those different areas of our existence. And so, so what I try to encourage people to do is exactly what we encourage our astronauts to do, is to, um, um, is to make a routine, start out with simple things, make, make each day, because there are things that are so much out of control, out of our own control right now. We can't control when we're gonna get back to work or when we're gonna get back to school. There's, cert there's so many uncertainties um, that we need to take small steps to be able to rebuild that normalized, uh, normalization of our life. And so we can start that by just simple steps each day, by setting daily goals uh, for each of those areas of your life, heart, mind, body, and soul. And so I know that a lot of gyms are closed, for instance. And so, so we would tend to say like, well, I can't, I can't maintain my physical health because the gym is closed or what have you. So, so that's why I encourage people, well, look around you. Uh, look around you. There are probably things that you can do to maintain uh, that physical health. Um, I try to encourage people, if you have stairs in your home or your apartment, go up and down the stairs. If you're able to get outside, if you're in an area where it's not hugely congested and you can get outside and still maintain that uh, that distance, um, get outside. You know, Do things just by walking or using your own body weight to do squats or our push-ups or do yoga, do planking or what have you, you know, do things that you can all just need to use your, and then it'll help build your, your physical well-being. So, well, and so, so what you're talking, since I was asking you about the mental, your think, your, what you're telling me is that it's a very holistic, that one influence the other. Yes. So if you have an unbalance, it will affect your mental, you know, um, skills. That's so. Your, your, That's exactly your, right, Evelyn. The, um, in fact, um, uh, what I encourage people to do, because with this pandemic and being, us being locked up, if you just let it control you, this is what, what it looks like when you let it control you. You stay in your pajamas all day and you turn on the news and, and kind of coil up on the couch and worry about um, your, your job, your family, your, uh, the health of uh, those around you. And so... So rather than do that, um, take take concrete steps to make life seem normal. So when you get up, make your bed. Okay, that it might take a minute, it might take five minutes, but make your bed because when you do that, um, you begin to bring order back to your life and a little bit of structure and just a little bit of a time at a time. So I encourage students and kids of all ages make your bed, including myself. Make your bed. <laughs> Get out of your jammies. Now, I think that maybe every other Friday we could do like jammy Friday or something, you know, <laughs> and we could, you know, that's that's OK as a as a as a group activity or what have you. But um, get out of your pajamas, put on regular clothes. Now, I happen to have my blue suit on. I'm I'm not in quarantine all the time in my blue suit, although, <laughs> although sometimes it helps me feel normal. It helps me feel normal in my in my existence and it'll it'll help you as well. And. And and by, doing, by doing those little steps, you know, and they don't cost any money, they cost us just a little bit of time, and you get out of your clothes, you start to feel normal, and then schedule um, schedule this holistic health for yourself. So schedule some physical exercise, schedule um, uh, mental exercises like reading. I encourage people to put together puzzles, yeah. yeah, put together puzzles and things like that. Connect with your friends and family on on video chats and things, and challenge each other with um, with different ideas and things like that. So keep your mind healthy, you know, and keep your uh, keep your uh, uh, emotional health um, uh, healthy as well. That where you can stay connected to, you know, the it, it, our lives are like a jigsaw puzzle, 
And I used to love to put together jigsaw puzzles when I was a kid. And the way they do jigsaw puzzles, they make beautiful a beautiful image. It might be a photo or it might be a painting or something. And they make this beautiful image. And then they cut it up into a thousand pieces and yeah. put it in a box and then deliver it to your home or you buy it in a store or something. And then you, what, what do we do when we put together a puzzle? We dump the pieces out and then we put the, we put the box right there so we could see what the picture looks like. Correct. Well, this is precisely what's happened to our, the beautiful picture of our lives. So all of us are on sort of different pathways, building this beautiful picture of who we are and, and, and what we're becoming. And so, and this, it's a beautiful picture and it's now been cut up into a thousand pieces and dumped in front of us. And now life has taken a, that box away. So now we have this pile of pieces. And the good news is that all the pieces are there, and including, including what you have in your mind of what you're gonna become and the things you're going to achieve. And so much like metaphorically putting together a puzzle, now we have to do it without the picture being present. And so what do we do when we have a puzzle when we don't know what the picture looks like? We look for those corner pieces. Wow. And those four, those four corner pieces are your heart, mind, body, and soul. And you can begin to build that. So we look for the edges, you know, the edge pieces to build this beautiful picture of our life. And um, so our lives right now are much like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. The good news is all the pieces are there. Exactly. And so, Very important. Uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the bad news is that it's going to take hard work to put that picture together again, but you can do it. And it's just a way of getting that found, you know, we put together a puzzle, we put together those corner pieces first. Wow. And then, the, then the, connective, the connective tissue, the edges are our emotional health. That's our connection to all different parts of our uh, members of our family, people we work with, our, our extended family and uh, to maintain the health of those connections as well, so. Wonderful, oh my gosh, you know, that's a very uh, great advice, you know, because we can create whatever we want. We could, we could make it to be and look however we want to, that new puzzle, that new. That's system. exactly right. And, and, and ideas, new inventions, and yeah, new ways. So, that's it's right. fascinating. That's okay. exactly right, and this is precisely what we did, uh, Evelyn, when we worked together in the VR lab, we, um, you know, the, the, the way you put together this this puzzle of how you're going to solve something, it's like you're starting out by like, well, we know what uh, we know what the end looks like. But when you're working together in teams like we do as astronauts, uh, like we do on sports teams or scholastic teams, whatever it is uh, that we're putting together, um, everybody has a piece of that puzzle. So everybody uh, we practice this in mission control and at NASA, we practice simulations where now, now the reality is we know what the picture is that we want to build. We want to build this beautiful puzzle uh, and the puzzle is survival. We want to, at the end of the day, we want everybody to be alive on the spaceship and we want the spaceship to still be sailing through space. And so that's our picture. And so, but guess what? Everybody on the team holds some pieces. And so, uh, and, and for you to hold on to those pieces and not give them and offer them up to the team to build, build this beautiful picture, that's what happens in the astronaut office and on, on the space station. We're all members of this team. Pieces to that puzzle to put it together, so. Excellent. Now, wonderful. I think this you, you describe it just beautiful. That's teamwork too. So yeah, absolutely. That's teamwork exactly. So now, um, th this is kind of something that I always had in mind, um, and I know that um, how important it is to look at the Earth, right? When you're in the space station, looking now about how you feel going through this. You're isolated in the space, and you're looking in, into the Earth through the cupola. So. Um, as we travel, right, now we're going to be traveling beyond towards the moon, towards Mars. Um, I think this is important, right, to keep looking at the Earth. Why looking at the Earth, you know, mm -hmm. contemplating, spending some time helps in fighting anxiety? And, and um, do you think a virtual Earth will do the same trick? 
Absolutely. Yep. I, I think I think virtual uh, virtual um, reflection to life as we know it is going to be critical for the uh, psychological health of our of our astronauts going to the moon and then on to Mars because they're on a, on a trip to Mars. There will be points a, a long part of that journey where you won't be able to see Earth, um, and that's that's probably the most important psychological. Um, uh, thing we have on board the space station because when you're feeling disconnected, when you're feeling isolated, when you're feeling separated from all you know um, as your as your former life, you know, um, you go to the window and you look out and you it, you're still seeing the beautiful Earth pass underneath you and and beautiful silence, you know, in this vast empty sea of darkness by di by day. Uh, when the sun is shining, now we're orbiting once every 90 minutes. So every 45 minutes we get a sunrise or a sunset. And so, and in the in the sunrise, in the in the shining sun off the earth, it's like the earth is like an explosion of color mm -hmm. in this vast empty sea of darkness. And um, and then at night, um, it gets disturbing, disturbingly uh Electrifying as you look at the earth, it's a you see a mosaic of all of our towns and villages and cities, a mosaic of light across the landscape. Then you see lightning strikes that looks like paparazzi flash bulbs, you know, from cameras, and uh, like you're That's on the red carpet or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can... And then you could see the aurora and everything. So I thought to myself, you know, so th so the connectedness to the planet. Um, is is real and it's and it's when you when you're in space and you can look out you, you say that there's my beautiful home this beautiful oasis in this vast empty sea of darkness and i'm not there and so so that becomes uh, a sort of pressing on the emotional and psychological spirit of our astronauts and so we have them stay connected in some fashion stay connected now uh, you could do that by, I, I did that by photography out the windows of the earth. Um, I, I wrote down in a journal. This is something that all of us can do during this pandemic, by the way. Start a journal. If you haven't done so already, start now. Start today and write down your thoughts. Write the day and the date and then write down your thoughts and how you're progressing through. And by, if you do this, this will help you to not only survive uh, this quarantine or this isolation, you'll thrive because you'll begin to build your story because you'll you start to think to yourself, it's like, I'm going to do this when I, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to change these things. You know, right. the puzzle, the puzzle pieces that we have now. Guess what? I mean, all those times where we say, like, gosh, if I could do it all over again, I would do fill in the blank, you know, or um, I would study, you know, fill in the blank. Or if I could go back in time, I would. I would change the way I handled this relationship or this conversation, you know, so here's our time. Here's our time. So now we have the time to change those things, make, make uh, changes to those things, re reestablish connections maybe that have been severed or maybe some relationships or friendships that are, uh, that are suffering or what have you. We can take the time now to mend those things. Well, and, and, and also I think that we always run such a fast time fast life yes and all of us i mean i imagine you actually actually uh, as an astronaut always uh, in so many um activities and things and uh, you know training you have to be so pausing for a minute and really contemplating your own life and and write it down it will allow you to i guess um uh, uh, you know better it M make it more meaningful more purposeful having more purpose that that's right. And one day, one day, maybe ten years from now, maybe twenty years from now, we're all going to look back, and somebody's going to ask us. Uh, they're going to say, like, "Hey, you were alive during 2020 when we had the the pandemic. What was it like? Tell me what. Tell me what you did. How did you survive this? What did? You, and you'll be able to have these journals, this kind of your own your own chart of your own story, and you can. You can help others uh, overcome challenges in their life because because you survived this. Not only did you survive, you figured out a way to thrive during this. And so, when you when we all emerge from this, the other end of this, whether it's a month or six months or a year from now, 
whenever we get back to what we remember as normal, um, you're, you can, there are ways, there are concrete steps you can take right now, starting today, to be able to emerge on the other end as, as a stronger person, because you thrive during this. You, you said like, you know, from now on, I'm not gonna do, uh, I'm gonna focus on this, I'm gonna focus on these tasks, I'm, I'm gonna make sure I maintain those connections with my family, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really um, develop a hunger and a thirst for uh, all the simple beauty in our, that's all around us. You, you hit right on it, um, um, Evelyn, and this is what virtual reality can bring to us as well, because, you know, life passes us by, you know, and um, because we usually, th- we usually set a goal in, my, in our mind and we're not going to let anybody let, alter us from that pathway. And so we, we go with blinders on. Meanwhile, all the simple and beautiful things in our life that are, it's where our greatest, uh, it's where our greatest stories come from. It's where our greatest poetry comes from. It's where our greatest lyrics to our songs come from. It's all these simple and beautiful, sometimes painful experiences in life that help draw out, um, boy, like I, I, I never, yeah. hope, I, I hope that never happens to me again or what have you, you know, so, and, but we can help others by, by capturing those moments, um, sort of like let them wash over us and then write them down. Like what, what steps we're going to take to overcome uh, the adversity. It's amazing working. that you said that because I don't think that only relate relates to a personal story. It could be related to your work life. That's right. That's like exactly right. Relationships, which are important, you know, because um, uh, we tend to uh, not really think about how we're treating others uh, within that space. So this even gives you a time now that you're virtually, we're virtually in communication. So um, that's very important points. And it, now for you, how how have uh, you dealt with the overcoming now this kind of communication? Has that a how has that affect you or not? Or what do you have you have to? Uh, research, yeah, a, I don't know. Adjust to how how have you adjust to this this type of communication now all the time virtually? Absolutely, it's it's a great question because yeah. you know. E- even I, 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 you know, I profess these things, you know, but to, to this day, I have to get up and make my bed. I have to make sure I get out of my jammies. And, you know, so it's just, it's, a, I'm human, just like you are, just like everybody listening in. Uh, we're all human. So we have these human fears and anxieties and things. And so, but you could, and there are certain things we just don't have control over. And so what I encourage people to do is, uh, and we encourage our astronauts as well, is to, is to stay sort of in the present, you know, stay, because the past, um, you know, we can learn from it, certainly, we, and we learn from the past all the time, and we, if we're not learning from the past, we're, we're not really building a, a better future for ourselves, so, but not to dwell in the past, so we can take sort of lessons learned, it's like, oh gosh, I'm never going to do that again, or I wish I hadn't said that, but don't dwell on that, because that, we can't change the past. The present is really the only thing that we can impact, and we can we can use the present to be able to, you know, uh, fix things or maybe fix relationships that were broken in the past, and we can plan for an amazing future. Uh, we can't change either one of those, the past or the future, but we can certainly change our present, and we can we can uh, we can stay on a pathway that that leads to the hopes and dreams and goals that we have for our own life. And so, um, and psychology, I think they call it mindfulness, but it's a, it's a, it's a way of just kind of staying in the present. And the way we remind each other in space is that, um, there's nothing so, uh, there's nothing, um, uh, so bad in space that we can't make it worse, you know? So, so, uh, uh, it's kind of a kind of a running joke. So it's so it's easy to you know to let fear overcome you, right. and uh, rather than stepping back and say like, "Hey, wait a second, um, I'm going to use uh, every bit of my existence and every bit of my the strengths and uh, of my team, and we we can overcome these challenges." And so, being able to stay in the present is really really a critical skill, mm-hmm. and. Um, this is this reminds me a lot, Evelyn, of what we're doing right now. It reminds me of a lot of our 
life on board the space station because um, we had to we had to um, uh, use like uh, <laughs> vi video conferencing and and yeah. the telephone and things to communicate with friends and so it reminds me a lot of um, right. of uh, of being on the space station and 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 if that's a if that's something you like to do like somebody wants to work with NASA or be an astronaut or what have you. I would encourage you, and even if you don't, you don't, you're you're essentially on your own long duration space mission right now in in your home. So your home, whether it's a big house or a or a small apartment, whatever it is, that's your spaceship. And so, the first thing you should look around and say, like, who are my crewmates? And, may, and maybe you're alone, like physically alone. But another important point I want to point out to the listeners: there's a big difference between being alone. And being lonely. Exactly. Now, and this this is this will help with your mental and emotional health. It's like there's a big difference. Being alone might not be a choice for you because you might be under the in your own home by yourself, um, and that's okay. There's a big difference between being alone and being lonely, though. Being lonely is a choice, and so. That's that's how we're going to relate to the situation that we're in. How we're going to navigate um, this un unusual um, and sometimes uh, anxiety-ridden uh, um, existence, you know that. And so, by to do that, we have to be able to let go of the things we can't control and start start taking control of the things we can control. We can control communicating with friends and family. We can control that. We can control um, our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health. We can do that. And we can take small steps uh, to get there. So those are the things we can control. So, um, uh, yeah. yeah, no, this is no, th that, that's actually a great point. That's a great point about the, the, the difference between those two. And I, I know people are going through that. Now we're going to have tons of astronauts around the world. Because yes, of, that's exactly right. See, I mean, that's, that's that's what I'm always looking in, into the positive because yeah. I think that at the end, you know, just like this mission, we're going, we're, we're I think of this as a mission. We're going through this mission, and it, it's going to have to end. So that what what we're going to be after that. So this is wonderful. And and talking yeah. about this, which is exciting, talking about new astronauts and the future of a space flight, we're going to have a great launch next week on Absolutely. the twenty third. Uh, we're going to see, finally, um, astronauts launching from Florida again, from the U.S., after the space shuttle ended, which it was, uh, what, in 2011? That's so, correct. Yeah. Um, this is an incredible moment, new vehicle. So um, what do you think this is so significant, especially during this time, especially <laughs> during this time, where we're all, you know, kind of uh, going through this, you know, quarantine and, and, and situation with this pandemic. Why is this so important for the business of human space flight? Yeah, so it's uh, it's the first commercial launch of, uh, of uh, astronauts. And so um, it's so vitally important. It's, it's really sort of conceptually, it's opening up access to space for everybody. You know, when I was, when I was growing up, I, I grew up in a very small town in upstate New York. Um, uh, in the mountains of upstate New York and very rural area, small school. I think I had 15 kids in my class and um, very small school. And, and I was a little boy when we put people on the moon. And so we, uh, and, and I remember watching that on a small black and white TV. Of course, it was in the summer of 1969. And so I remember watching that. Then when I got to class the next year, we had a brand new teacher. Her name was Christine West. And Miss West was right out of teaching school. And um, she came from the big city of Albany, New York, which is the capital of New York. And she came she came to this little town, in this tiny little school. And uh, her first day, uh, and he, she said, who, who saw the moon landing? And I raised my hand, you know. And um, she said, one day you could do that too. And uh, we all thought, we all looked around. It's like, this lady is crazy. She has no idea where she is in this ordinary little place, this ordinary, just full of ordinary, uh, this school filled with ordinary kids, you know, and um, something like that, flying to space or launching on a rocket or building a rocket or flying an airplane. Those were things that were, I felt in my mind, reserved for extraordinary people. And so it was many years later 
And as I was going through my career, something really cool would happen. I'd get, I'd get to experience something that I never dreamed I would be able to experience. And um, I kept thinking back and I, I thought, I wonder if Miss West was right. You know, all those years ago, if she was right, if she knew something I didn't know about the human existence and our, our place here. And um, it was years later, I was selected as an astronaut in 1998, many years later, and I, uh, one in those first early days, I met Neil Armstrong, and I, I was, I was able to just sort of be like, there was about four of us there. We were talking to him, and I wanted to ask. I kept reflecting back, you know, to my, to my teacher, Miss West, and I thought, like, I wonder if she was right. I wanted to know what Neil Armstrong felt like when he was on the moon, and because I remember how I felt as a little kid, you know, in this tiny little town. And so I asked him, I said, Mr. Armstrong, when you were on the moon, did you get a chance to look back at Earth and think to yourself what a profound moment it was in human history, that things were no longer going to be the same? He said, you know, I thought about that. And um, I thought about the people that built that rocket. And and the, the, I was hoping I was going to press a button to fly off the plant, off the, the moon to get back home. And I was hoping that would work. And I thought about the people that designed that system. And I thought about my teachers. And I thought to myself, how does an ordinary little boy from Wapakoneta, Ohio, end up standing on the moon? And so he laughed and I laughed and we all, we all kind of chuckled a little bit. And I thought to myself, hmm. wait a second. It's like, that's a familiar story. It's like, and it's true for me. It's true for Neil Armstrong. It was true for Neil Armstrong. It's true for you as well, that we're all just ordinary kids mm -hmm. from ordinary places, from ordinary schools, but we have these extraordinary dreams um, of what our life can become and what the things we can achieve. And so it's all in the preparation. It's all in the preparation of being able to intersect your life with the extraordinary opportunity. And so now next week we have, uh, or just coming up real soon, uh, we have the the uh, the next commercial flight. So now uh, several years ago, we started, um, NASA finally realized after many, many years of flying to space and flying to the moon, it's like, hey, you know what? All these creative thoughts, you know, this creative imagination and in design and in rocketry and, uh, in fuel systems and uh, in engineering and, and uh, physical science, all these innovative and creative ideas normally kind of bubble up from the commercial enterprise, from the, the human spirit and the human imagination. And so we finally, it took a long time. NASA is very good about captivating the human imagination, but now we've actually kind of harnessed uh, the 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 uh, human innovation and creative thought yeah. uh, to bring to bring along commercial partners, and um, and so this started several years ago. But now we've got you look around and the opportunities uh, to get involved in flying to space are just like innumerable. I mean, it's just um, if if you can't find a place where you can plug in to, with your particular discipline, uh, you're not looking hard enough because there's. Lots of big, big and small companies out, startup companies that are that are coming along that are, uh, and now um, in the in the coming days we're going to witness that first commercial rocket built in the U.S. by U.S. hands by imaginative and creative uh, thinkers uh, in the commercial sector, and we're going to put two astronauts on on top of that rocket and we're going to launch it to the space station. That's very exciting for us, and it's a. It's going to change the way we, it's going to open up space, at least low Earth orbit, to all commercial science and commercial enterprise. Wow. And what, what we're all about at NASA is we, all of the science we're doing in space and on the space station, it's all designed uh, to help us take better care of ourselves, make, uh, take better care of each other, and take better care of our planet. Those are the three pillars of of uh, our, all of the science we're doing in space. And so it's very exciting because it's a chance for everybody listening in. This is your moment because this is the moment. It's like, we're all connected now. We're all astronauts, just like you said, Evelyn. We're exactly. all astronauts and we're we awesome. all, this is this is a moment in human history um, that we can be like, you know, we're, we're all human. And so all of these 
cool things we see in the human existence. We see people walking on the moon. We see people, you know, flying to space. We see breakthroughs in medicine. You know, we see all these different areas of science. It's like, it's all part of the human existence. And you're human, I'm human. And so it's all avail- It's all available to all of us. You know, so we all have access now. And this is sort of a a big statement in, in that, uh, you know, space belongs to all of us. And so, um, yeah, and, and so it's, space. it's very, yeah, it's very, very exciting. It's, uh, um, it's the first big moment where we have, now we've been launching commercial rockets. It just hasn't been, we, we say sort of jokingly, there hasn't been little pink bodies on the, on the, exactly. pointy, end, on the yeah. pointy end. And so you that's know, right. This will, this, will be the first, <laughs> this will be the first time. So this is, uh, um, this is a major moment in our in our spacefaring uh, years, and so it's very very exciting. I think when I was a kid um, uh, and growing up, the the space shuttle, the uh, a spaceship a spaceship with wings. Who would ever thought, you know? But but that leading back, back but, yeah. Forward. But that um, this just the space shuttle, just the concept of a spaceship with wings, like energized and uh, and um, uh, it actually inspired. A couple of generations of engineers and scientists and teachers and uh, you know everybody that works in the STEM area, you know, and uh, and now we're including the arts in there too. For so we're saying STEAM sometimes where we we need like the uh, the psychological arts, the arts of design and uh, and uh, uh, choreography, you know, for building our flight missions and things things like that. So there's room for everybody in this. Uh, in this great venture in space. And so we're very excited about that. Oh, I know. Um, this is, well, for me, imagine I worked so long for that, towards that, and, and towards obtaining that goal when I was in NASA, that this is incredible. It reminds me, too, of when we pioneer also the virtuality and virtual reality, where we were able to immerse people in realities that didn't exist, right? And anything That's exactly that exists. Right. Even that can be used to now be there. You know, even if you're not exactly right, technologies and innovation come from uh, bringing people together to uh, share ideas. And this is wonderful that NASA is doing that. So this is um, very excited and looking forward to next week. Now, uh, we're coming to the end of our interview, but I have two more quick questions. How do you think this this uh, launch next week um, enhances your opportunity to go to space now. <laughs> well, um, I, I hope to go again, but I, I'll tell you what, this is actually another, uh, uh, for any teachers or professors that are listening in, um, because I, I've been with NASA now, I've been an astronaut for over 20 years, and so I'm beginning, I'm really just at the very beginning of finding the joy in um in helping others get there, which is, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a hurdle. When I came in, I was like, gosh, I want to fly to space. I got a, a couple of opportunities and I'd love to, yes. I'd love to go again. So um, to all the teachers and professors out there, you, you guys have actually, the guys and gals that are listening in that are in the teaching profession or maybe have aims to go into the teaching or research area. Um, you know, we're all writing our own story. It's a beautiful story that we're writing about our life and our journey and the things that we want to become. And um, in that story, we're always the hero of our own story, aren't we? I mean, we we think about you know, I'm the hero in my own story, and that we and we should be as we write our as we write the story of our journey um, and our uh, our aspirations. Um, but there's real magic in becoming a hero in someone else's story. And so I'm really just beginning to find the joy in that. And, um, and I would love to go, trust me. I would, if they, if they called me tomorrow and said like, Hey, uh, one of the astronauts that's going next week has fallen ill. Could you jump in there? I'd be, I'd be, uh, throwing my blue suit on and heading to Florida, you know, if I had to drive there, you know, so, so, uh, I, I would be the first one to volunteer to go and I would love to go. Um, but I, but I now realize the importance of what this brings to the human spirit and, um, and to the human imagination. And so I'm finding a lot of joy in becoming a hero in someone else's story and someone else's journey. Um, and that's part of uh, a way to help you get to your own goals and dreams is to help someone else um, in the things they're pursuing as well. So, um, yeah. Oh, so. Yes, yeah. Well, yes, that's that's always nice to be able to share 
you know, it has an incredible uh, feeling in of growth, yeah. personal growth. So also, Evelyn, if they Evelyn, if they told you, hey, we need you to put put you on rocket, you'd go, I'm sure, as well. <laughs> Well, you know, I thought about that many <laughs> years ago. I don't think I, I'd yeah. rather help, which is a uh, help to, to, for others to pursue that. Yeah. So because I, I never saw myself as, as an astronaut, but I, I, I wanted to be in the creative side of designing what that will be like into yeah, it, what will be like going in that process. So, it, but, but it's interesting to, to look at it and everybody has different, you know, purposes in, in yeah. design. So, so helping others to obtain that, and like you said, you know, I mean, we want to be me, 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 but at the end of the day, is is also you can become the the superhero for somebody else's story. Which and is it's precisely what you've done in my life, Evelyn. I mean, so many years ago, we worked together for so many years <laughs> in virtual reality, trying to replicate. I had such a fear and anxiety about walking out into in the vacuum of space and. Um, <laughs> You, you, over those years, became a hero in my story. So I, I'm very appreciative of that. And, that, and that's a, it's a wonderful feeling when you can do that for someone. And so for all of our teachers and professors out there, administrators, I mean, this is the magic that you, you have right before your eyes is to become, uh, help others become, uh, uh, rise to their full potential. There's, right. there's incredible uh, joy in that. So. Well, and you know, the joy, uh, in my position, as I was, we were supporting so many missions. So imagine all the missions I had to support since 1993. So it was a lot of helping every one of those missions during the training. So so I did did leave that, and now that I'm uh, how in the academia world, in the higher education, is precisely giving back and, and looking at uh, you know the desires of and dreams of students. Uh, so my last question to you, though, okay. because you know, we, where time is coming to an end, what would you be thinking seeing Bob and Doug take off? What will be, you know, oh, um, a moment? Because And I know I've been there. Yeah. <laughs> what would be your thoughts? Wow. Um, I, 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 think, I think now about uh, my daughter and uh, my grandkids one day, you know, how... Uh, and I think about the young students that are listening in, you know, because we say that uh, in 20 years, 25 years, maybe it takes 30 years to get to Mars. We're going to see people walking on Mars. And whoever those people are, they're probably, you know, astronauts are usually selected in their 30s, you know, mid 30s. So the, the reality is those first people to step foot on Mars are somewhere in our classrooms, somewhere in our school system. And our uh, um there's, maybe it's even somebody listening to this podcast that'll be the first person to step foot on Mars. That's very exciting for me. And so for me, watching this um, in the coming days, uh, I'm getting goosebumps already just talking about it. So uh, there's going to be a sense of pride. Uh, you know, there's always a sense of anxiety, you know, and um, and uh, I hope everything goes right. And if, and if things go, if we have malfunctions that we've been able to simulate and be able to um, overcome those things. And so there's always a little bit of anxiety with a space uh, uh, a space vehicle launch. And so, but most of all, I think it'll be just sort of a, a feeling of pride because this is something that we've done together, you know, that uh, as a society um, and as a spacefaring nation, uh, we've been able to do this together. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it's actually just, uh, it's gonna be a moment of pride. I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll probably try to hide my tears as I watch, you know, so, but, um, but looking forward to just learning a ton, you know, we're going to learn a lot about every time we launch a rocket um, and now, especially with people on it, we're going to, yeah, we're going to learn a lot about um, ourselves, our, our, we're going to learn a lot about our fears, uh, the things that we know about space. And we're going to, we're going to learn some new things about space. And so um, it's all to kind of build a better, a better future for uh, our future astronauts as well. So, well, Doug, it has been wonderful to talk to you, get in contact with you virtually. Absolutely. So, I truly, truly appreciate this time and all this wonderful conversation. I think you're hitting so many uh, important and meaningful key, um, you know, uh, items here. Uh, and I just uh, wanted to, you know, wish you the best 
And uh, mm -hmm. of course, I'll be looking for you to be selected next. Next. Uh, so, um, you know, if you want to say anything else, that will be okay. end. But. Awesome. Well, I wanted to leave just one thought. Um, this is for everybody, including myself, because I remind myself of these words. I, I'm I'm not a big space movie buff, but I, I do like watching these space, like The Martian, Gravity, and Interstellar, and things like that. And I I do enjoy those things because there's always a point in the space thing where it's like, gosh, that's not really realistic or what have you, you know. But there was a moment in the movie Interstellar uh, that was so profound for me. Now. Um, it was in the early part of the movie, Matthew McConaughey's character was sitting on the front porch, sort of looking out over the the sort of the dust bowl that we had turned our planet into. And um, and, you know, thinking about the 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 weighty burden of of uh, the human condition and um, somebody asked him that was sitting there on the porch with him. They said, what, do, what are you thinking about? What are you worried about? He goes, I, I just think back. Um, when I was a kid, when I was a little boy, I remember looking up at the night sky and dreaming of our place in the stars. Yeah. And now all we do is look down and worry about the dirt at our feet. Wow. And I thought to myself, wow, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps right now because I thought, how profound, because, because that sort of has happened, it happens to us all along our journey, but um, we take our eyes off the stars, which... Mm -hmm. For all of us listening in, it's your dreams, your goals, the beautiful things that you have planned for your life. And sometimes we just worry about, we just drop our eyes and forget to look up and we just worry about our the dirt at our feet. You know, the um, maybe uh, an, Ill, an illness or some sort of adversity, um, a job loss, what have you. And so we tend to focus on those things and we take our eyes off, uh, off the stars. So my encouragement and... Um, in uh, uh, finishing up this podcast is a, is for everybody listening and keep your eyes on those stars, whatever those stars are in your life, the goals, dreams, aspirations you have for your own journey, your own existence, um, or for your children, you know, um, don't take your eyes off that night, that beautiful night sky. And, you know, the, the things that the dirt at our feet will take care of itself. And we, you know, if we stay focused on those, uh, on the, on the high calling of our life, uh, uh, we're we're going to be able to achieve it. So I I really appreciate the the chance to talk to you and. Uh, oh, thank you, thank uh, you. Though. It was really uh, great, and I appreciate it. Those are very meaningful words. Absolutely. So well, thank yeah. you, and have a great day. <laughs> thank you all so so much to everybody listening in. Stay safe and healthy, and uh, I'll see you as we emerge on the opposite end of this. And hopefully we'll be able to connect again, maybe even one day in person. I'd, I'd love to do that. So, Of course. Well, take care and Absolutely. have a great day, Doug. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.